Welcome to West Oakland, West Africa, International Poetry Change. Um, this is the uh, culminating reading of an eight week exchange. We had um, poets from CIA Lagos exchanging with poets from Oakland, mainly the West Oakland area. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm Carla Brundage, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this exchange. So um, a few years ago back around 2016, I was just come back from Cote d'Ivoire, West Africa, where I had been living for three years and um, was going to Mills College. And I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if we had an international poetry exchange? And so um, working with Sir Black from a Holocausta and other poets, in the West Africa region, we founded um, West Oakland to West Africa. And, you know, I was inspired by uh, June Jordan, Poetry for the People, Ishmael Reed, KRS One, and other revolutionary Afrocentric leaders. But what influenced me the most was the city of Oakland, how to, um, how Sankofa or this idea of returning to our roots and um, an exchange based on culture could help us and hopefully ultimately end violence in our communities. So we've embraced this um, symbol, the Sankofa um, bird um, used by Akan people of Ghana, meaning reaching back to knowledge gained in the past. And it's usually symbolized by a bird putting an egg on its back. And Sankofa teaches us that we must go back to our roots in order to move forward. Uh, over 12 million people were taken and enslaved, uh, mostly from West Africa during the transatlantic slave trade. Our mission is to create healing and reconnection between Africans and African Americans who have long been separated due to the Ma'afa, the calamity of slavery, and many currents of um, current socioeconomic factors. So basically how the exchange worked is through partnering. Um, my organization, West Oakland to West Africa, provides a sustained exchange and connects members of the African diaspora and Africa through creative writing. And we use a form called Renshi poetry, which is a Japanese form also known as linked or chained poem. And what happens in these poems is um, using different themes, people are paired up over a course of time in which they exchange poems where you take the last line of your partner's poem to start the first line of your poem. Um, we were lucky to have Iodeli and Zinga, who's here, lead a poetry workshop for us. And we wrote on themes such as uh, ancestors or influential women, um, identity poems, narrative poetry which tell a story of a memory as well as our final piece was a celebration poem uh, we partnered with cia lagos a few um follow-ups uh, i do want to say i'm actually not in oakland today i'm in ukiah but well oakland is uh seated ohlone land uh, not seated but ohlone land which had been um claimed by the United States government. So I want to acknowledge the land we're calling in from. Um, and I also wanted to um, let the viewers know that we have a very safe space. We've talked about the ways we relate to each other and respect each other and do not tolerate hate speech of any form or racism or discrimination. We also, I just also wanted to share that um, since we are on Zoom, which has been a beautiful thing in terms of my ex of, of this exchange, we have um, also had the fact that we are on Zoom, so we haven't met each other. So I want to encourage people to please like clap, show your enthusiasm, uh, give people feedback in the chat as you always are, and I'll be posting the lineup in the chat every once in a while. Also, since um, Tess will be highlighting the readers, we're gonna try and hi highlight the partner pairs as it comes up, as you come up. So you'll be highlighted when you're with your partner, when your turn comes up. And um, other than that, you do not need to have your 
screen on all the time. Um, you're, you don't need to have it on. You are welcome to have it on so that people can see your face. But if it, if it causes a little bit of um, connection activity, you can also be off screen until it's your turn. Um, I am so happy to have two co-hosts today who will be emceeing, um, Kevin Dublin and um, Gemini on the Nigeria side. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to Kevin um, and I'm, we're gonna get started. So um, here's our first readers. Take it away, Kevin. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks everybody for coming out. It's about to be fantastic. Uh, our first pair of poets, uh, or actually, you know, first poet will be Shauna Sherman and a bio for, so we would do, we did these seven word bios. And so the bio for Shauna is poet, librarian, reader, walker, earth enthusiast. All right. Um, is Rayma Sunshine here? Rayma, if you are, can you unmute yourself? Great. Okay, so we'll just highlight Shauna. We'll go on to Shauna. Hello, everybody. Um, I just, I, uh, I'm so, yeah, missing Rayma Sunshine today, but she was my partner, and I just have one poem to share, and it's based off of the last line of one of her poems that was about her um, strong mother and um, how she really appreciated her leadership qualities. From green pastures, I gaze at memories leading the way measured by a redwood tree in the land of giants. The direction finder points to angle 88 degrees. I'm a statue with wings, utility pole evergreen. I persist in mist and wind and among achromatic insects, wondering at the tongue of the moth at it, as it sucks nectar from the wild orchid nearby, flits to a flower higher in the canopy. Patch me to this swirling existence, woman, goddess, fighter, truth teller, accommodationist, no more. Here fireworks burst and a blue light flashes in the distance. All right, so Dee Allen was part of our East Oakland to East Africa exchange, uh, which had our reading yesterday, but, um, and his partner was Evan Muti, who read yesterday. Evan plays guitar while spinning words of light. Dee Allen um, was, is here uh, to share from his exchange, and Dee Allen is an East Oakland performance poet with five books total. Welcome, Dee Allen. Thank you. Morning alarm. It's morning again, and the first sound I hear rousing me from dreamless rest pulling me back into consciousness, comes live and direct from nature, from the sky, from long pointy black beak, swift as the crow will fly. Short, sharp repetitions of calls, calling the sleeping world to awaken. Sounds from a black bird's throat, more effective than the round battery powered clock on the shelf. Morning alarm from Brother Crow stirs my limbs into rather sluggish movements, enables my body to rise from a mattress on the cold brick flow, takes six steps to the lavatory in half light, flick of a light switch and my ritual begins. From towel rack to washcloth, to soap bar, to hot shower, to sink to mirror, to can of Barbasol, to razor. Afterwards, I look forward to my favorite part of this new day, meatless breakfast. Hash brown patties, seitan bacon strips, bowl of applesauce, hot cup of peppermint tea, and cherry flavored liquid vitamin B12 drops on my tongue. Vegan's best friend, savoring it all like a soul kiss from a fine sister. Topping off the routine, discussing the crow's call during the blue hour with my pen. 
after adding another poem to my notebook. Beautiful. Thank you, D. Allen. And that, that Except, poem was called Morning Alarm for the unrated poet in Kenya, my partner. In response to his poem, Young African Man by the unrated poet. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, D. Allen, uh, for bringing us back to the word. Um, the next pair we have coming up are, uh, you know, uh, David Odiason and Nana Botan. David, 78th Palmas, light pen scribbling dark truths, <laughs> not a reminder to erase voicemails, but call back. And welcome. Um, good day, everyone. My name is David, 78th Psalmist. <laughs> um, so here goes my poem. It's my identity poem. Um, here goes. When historians ask me to fetch my ancestors, I serve them the ocean in a bowl, watch its viscous content sway like the angst of a slave couple, dangle my grip loosely, and just enough to hear the water whisper, hold me gently, careful not to spill the truth of my becoming. Hold me gently. My rippling is a language fighting not to drown. Ghost stories of chattel testy vessels, some long as a sigh, dragging themselves to a haggard shore, a Jonah too salty to be swallowed. This is how we read water. This is how we read water. How we speak a language by being bubble-headed, holding our breaths and sinking. For what is water, if not a prisoner? Gas molecules bounded by the discordancy of chemistry. Aren't the tides, the water's way of staging an uprising. Like the bond people of Ebo landing. There are prepositions of mass suicides docked between these sentences. A worn out friction between ocean and wood. How do you read water? And then I'll go next. Um, and I am also reading my poem in response to David's. Uh, my poem is called Cotton Mouth, and I'm starting with David's last line. How do you read water? Does it come as a steamed morning dew or divine vaporized breath, perhaps corroded and leached? In Flint, they read water like a forgotten monthly subscription bill, the debt collector's scent. Red lines cross and dot eyes, a dry reminder attorney generals and governors heed. A hundred thousand bottles of water per week will have you thinking they irrigate the Sea of Galilee into a Dasani. Knock one down, pass it around for two counts of involuntary manslaughter on the wall. Loosen sludge is easily acquitted with brand name gauze and UV filtration from a modern American bloodstream. There's no fixer for salt, limestone, or simply being black. It will bacteria and flare growth. It will bacteria, a flare growth. That's what changes flavor. They'll ask, are you not an American if your water isn't a little dirty? Grizzled and smeared, this is how we read water. In the booth of a crowded golden corral, I spill my third refill of high seat orange, bibbing towards a speckled resin edge. This is how I read it. A wet bed, dirtied by comfort, sucking my thumb, a prune gilled alloy. This was my water. What is water if not a gift? Of relief. Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and carry that with me. How do you read water? Uh, our next pair coming up are Arinka uh, Aramolar Molar, and Lisa Gray. Arinka loves art and design, culture related research, teaching and traveling. Lisa writes, cooks, and loves reading books. Uh, 
Let's give it up and welcome Arianita and Lisa. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Lisa Gray, and the poem that I am about to read to you is called, uh, it actually doesn't have a name, but it is in response to Adyanka's poem that ends with the last line, let it be, we contend and not pretend. Let it be, we contend and not pretend that we do not recall babies marching for freedom down streets built on the backs of nameless souls, their dusky hues rendering them invisible for eternities. Let us not pretend that just last year, last month, last week, yesterday, blue monsters did not smother another mother's hope. Sitting on the back porch, she reaches for starlight and her fingers pluck memories from sky as sirens wail a song of death. The hole in her heart grown now grown round enough for her to slip into its dark depths as she sits smoking a Newport, a tear tickling her nose. She wants him back, her sunshine, but no marches, no juries, no prayers will resurrect his precious body, a threat. And so she sits on the back porch remembering. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. What I'm about to present is in response to Lisa's poem. And that was inspired when we had a narrative um, poem to write. And here goes mine. She sits on the back porch remembering, remembering the events as the images unfold. Remembering the images as they unfold like a rolled strip of horror films ready to be washed in the dark room to tell a gothic story. Going down memory lane, I remember that she is me. He was clothed in a black and white striped shirt. All I perceived was sweat. All I saw was filth. All I felt was dirt. With an accent, he yelled and commanded to be held. My little, brittle, fragile fingers went through his hair and beard. I remember that very act and scene of the play, its performance in its entirety was a tragedy accompanied with a dirge, my dirge, but no one was there to listen. No one was there to listen to my lament. No one was there to listen to my lament, to cut the scene, end the play or change the script. Talk less of the script. If there was a listening ear, who would hear? The truth. The truth was a nightmare of fear. Fear, daring fear that stifled a word, gagging the mouth with the threat of a sword. Like an oath forced on a meal of life crab for confessions and hurt. The way out of this omnia stab, I remember. I remember the family get-togethers, adults swaying left to right to the tune of high life music back in the 80s, raising a toast to each other. And mommy saying, sit on his lap. He's your uncle. To her, he was so trusted like the Oracle. But to me, his lineage calls were for his pleasure and spectacle. Irritate, I'd rather take solace with my pet boy tete tete. I remember calling. I remember calling. Mommy, shh, let's talk later. She filled my mouth with chunks of butter. As the get together rolled in frolicking butter, while I was forced in silence, swallowed my words and just listened to the melody and their chords. But for many hunting years, I remember, plagued by what I choose to do with it. Shall I be downcasted and pitied, or wield a weapon to fight against the tide, the tide of torturous memories of teen years, regarded by many now as a fiction on fairies? But I refuse to wallow in such turbulence. These thoughts, built a mind kiln, 
a kiln to bake all wedged needed thrown experiences sieved into fine clay and thrown on a wheel to create a masterpiece. I emerge as an earthen ware, glazed with timeless memories, filled with the challenging times of teen years. I have come of age and I refuse to be broken nor caged with memoirs of that face. I stand as terracotta brick wall, fortified by horrid days of teeming years, and I have made a warrior shield to win my own battles for I'll not yield. I choose to challenge the life experiences and rise as an overcomer, for it's time to celebrate whom I have become. Against all odds, I am terracotta. Thank you, everyone. Beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, you know, both of you, the blue monsters, it's mother, another mother's hope, you know, you know, coming of age or abusing me broken in cage. Yeah, just great, great, great work. Uh, the next pair we have, uh, you know, reading are Duana for Wiley and Julotino Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and Duana is an earth lover, epicure, Anthropologist, poet, Duratini, I wander within the boundaries of words. And let's welcome Duana Duratini. So I'm doing um, So when we got to the narrative poem, Jeremiah and I had so many things we were thinking about, we each kind of um, focused on what we really wanted to write out. And I decided to write out what I've been processing with COVID. And this poem is called Splinters in the Singular Event, COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-21. Phenomena have degrees. The sun sears with intensity, yet some of its flames still small. In diurnal rhythms, the moonless sky, an illusion, an earth turns in rotisserie. Its compulsive meat, perceptibly warming, unacceptably dry. Heat, too little dew, links us to distant neighbors at other poles. We will likely never know that country's folk who speak languages into the thousands, tongues we haven't logged in the universe of sound. Night and day babbled borders, leagues apart, divisions, the armaments of mirage. Now the boundaries of forest gone mark an unpredictable edge. Wildlife ponds in the draw game of drought. Exotic pets, organ medicine, tonic meat, scales, blood, powdered bone. Vitality bound to venality by taste. The viral seed jumps, novel species, flying kings clears the board. Colonial nations seed to imperial nature. Across seas and skies, princeless cruises, breezy air ducts trapped on open oceans. We banquet at plastic tray tables, craven, detrimental nourishment scarfed down, polyester flotilla seats, high touch buckles, and in the event of an emergency, place the mask over your face first before helping others. Self-administered cultural immunity is the jester vector. Delusions of grandeur, the host reservoir. Diagnosed, invective, infected, other. Denial trials, testing the limits of what it means to be sane. It's the last squall to see our common, or to see our commonality. 7.8 billion fused in a potential singular event. The technological dream of global connection made true through biomechanics of mutation. The world's fault lines retrench, death by disparities remade, 
teetering tallied model, the mounting extinction too fast to fathom. Numbers numb, senses abandoned, breath retires, the world's lungs deflate. Decimated habitats don't make news obsessed with the desperate normal. And so, amid shots of recovery, ecologies grow sicker. Exhausted before she's even born, the next pandemic sentinel curls up and goes back to sleep. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll be reading my um, response to um, to Duena's poem. And I called it, Can I Go Back? It goes, Can I Go Back? The days when relationships meant a lot. The days when friendships went based on material help, rather mutual connections of pains and pleasure. Pleasure of victories won, pains of battles lost. The beauty of a fraternity that lasts long, the days of genuine relationships, when we were not moved by clicks on the social media, the clout chasing and the likes. Popularity contest went the order of the day. When we rolled the tires with stick, meeting after school and our uniforms tell their stories, dated and stained. Even till now, when we talk about them, it brings about memories. It gladdens the art that, that truly friendship is born. We all grew up cherishing each other, knowing that our world would be used, won't be used against us. Your secrets didn't become tales for comical reliefs. Wish I could go back and experience true friendship. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, thank you, Duena. Those tongues we have a loss, what was it? And then, of, you know, uh, Jeremiah, thank you as well. The beauty of a fraternity that lasts long. Uh, great work. Uh, our, our next pair uh, are Meg Pierce and Michael Ayotnide. Meg craves courage, writes as revelation, seeks serenity. Michael shuffles through life with poetry for purpose. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Yeah, so I'm first. Right. So um, I'm reciting, I'm reading a poem, a response to Meg's um, narrative poem. And ow. So, yeah. So, the poem started and a war broke out. Do I keep fighting for a world that should be? I asked as my memory dragged me to remember. I was cramped with ideas and an eye that absorbed too much. I believe weeds were unfortunate creatures no one seems to appreciate, and that the garden is best cultivated in a graveyard, that it is best way to teach beauty. And the war broke out within me. It began the day I learned that death is the chief characteristics of being alive, and that I will be deleted before I am able to make any sense of the world I have been dumped in. This led my ideas to begin to undergo digestion, catalyzed by darkness with an insatiable appetite called reality. During the war, my voice competed against silence and lost. My eyes captured so much, but what can the mouth say without a tongue? I became an implosive. I sometimes wondered who dished out all tragedies, what criteria was being used, why the meal never went round, and if I could perhaps help Kama out with some delivery she could. I might have been a terrible cook, but I was certain I knew how to prepare a tasty dish of tragedy. All the meals of tragedy I prepared were devoured by me. And then I came to understand why Kama cannot be happy. Because being a chef meant you always have to take a bite out of your dish first. Time made me realize I had a superpower that I peeled off my skin so often the soil had hijacked what was left of it for safekeeping. This was why no one really ever saw me. At this point, the war within me was over and I was not victorious. 
as my dues returned their breath to wherever they got it from, my spine was arrested from my vertebra. My cranium was cracked open like a coconut, and my brain popped out, but there was nothing in the mouth without a tongue can say. I remember that I was alive, or long dead. Sometimes, what doesn't keep you? Sometimes, what doesn't kill you keeps you alive to kill you later. Thank you. Wow, well done. Sometimes what doesn't kill you keeps you alive to kill you later, but nothing destroys you without your permission. I spent years treading water in a storm, keeping my head up just long enough to gulp air before the next crashing wave beat me down. Years clinging to the shipwrecked debris of my ideals, smashed against rocks of patriarchy, jagged crags I didn't know could pierce my privilege. Eurocentrism and tradition, distinct formations in the daylight, equally destructive out of sight below the surface. Sometimes what doesn't kill you sits in the shadows, waiting until wounds have healed over, forgotten if not for the scars. Sometimes they know your weaknesses better than you do. I'd warned others about them, but in my hubris, I thought I was too strong to be broken. When others struggled, I stood by to help. When the struggle became my own, I could only survive. All those years of letting the current carry me, never stopping to reinforce my foundations, to question the direction of my rudder, recalibrate my compass, I didn't realize that my, it was my own arrogance, my own inability to recognize the ship rot that spilled me into a sea of insecurity that left me lost and floundering. In my ignorance, I treaded water, blaming the sirens, blaming the rocks, blaming the gods, keeping my head up, but just barely, until at last, I surrender to the deep. Sometimes what doesn't kill you keeps you alive. I found myself dragged onto home shores, safe, serene, solid sand beneath my feet. I wrapped myself in a fa in family, a warm blanket in cold winter. Oh, how good that ground felt. Not like the dangerous sea, not like the world out there with its monstrous teeth always threatening to chew me up. Oh, how good that earth felt. I'd build a home instead of a ship. Let others do the sailing. Let others do the fighting. Let others get lost in the sweet elixir of living. Let someone else be brave. Let someone else be the hero. Sometimes what doesn't kill you keeps you alive. Have you ever seen the sun rise or set over the sea? The way the hello or goodbye is more magical there. The way the ever-changing waves beckon you toward the horizon. Maybe the siren serenade is all a charade. Maybe even while they drew me to destruction, they wished for me to thrive. Maybe they too want freedom from the patriarchal powers. Maybe they carried me to shore, kept me alive. For what? Out there, people knew my name. I was a nemesis and a hero. Out there, beyond my comfort zone, I wasn't winning every war. But at least I was living with a purpose beyond myself, out there. Out there, I never stopped being afraid, but I dare to be brave. Sometimes what doesn't kill you keeps you alive until you're ready to stop dying and begin living again. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Such great work. Sometimes what doesn't kill you keeps you alive to kill you later. Sometimes, you know, what doesn't kill you keeps you alive like who just i definitely gonna keep that with me uh next pair coming up are amos white and godfrey elvis uh godfrey elvis uh oh well it's actually blocked by the little thing here <laughs> uh Nose and amos white writes photons of haiku and what did I know say the pregnant egg and a barren hen. Let's give it up. Hi, good evening. Um I'm a Genesis Godfrey Elvis Raving and I'll be saying a poem before your Nubian hues before his dreams lived. 
before your ivory shed his luster, before his prophecy was fulfilled. I saw him die that day. I remember it was a cool evening with orange sunsets painted in the sky, which were getting darker. The young kids playing and running around with untiled street, with its gutter oozing out the smell of a dead fish. People passing by hurriedly, as if ascending and descending the underdeveloped street with fear hanging atop their shoulders. Everyone was eager to find shelter before it gets very dark, lest there could be another victim. But the kids were more interested in rolling out motorbike tires while donning wild smiles on their faces. I remember. He walked past me while I stared at the sky and its amazing picture, painted out of the strokes of God's hands. He was bathed in blood. His clothes were ripped off his neck. His eyes whispered amazing grace. His mouth drooling for help. And his body too. Too weak to kick in energy to run for safety. I was astounded and gripped with fear. As I saw men in black uniforms having badges of brutality on their shoulders, wearing barriers of intimidation as they, as they were armed with guns of death, the men in black walked towards him. They were made a life, they were made life a living hell for him. I must confess, hell would have been very safe if hell really existed. I heard one of the men in black say, we go kill you and not think them will feed you. Another said, after we don't kill you, we go carry your cargo. And lastly, another said, young people of nowadays, eh, where then they see this money self? These were men meant to protect the society, men who were black so we could be white. Instead, they become the devil himself. Inflicting pains on the map of Nigeria, I saw them beat him to death. Yeah. Extrajudicial killings have become the norm. No one can raise their hands up in objections. Everyone shuts up the truth in their bones so they could have a slim chance of breathing tomorrow. I saw his face after he was left for dead. The hope on his face was blind. It's sad. Those kids rolling out motorbike tires will be dead someday for owning cars. Now, the men in black wear blue. A color meant for the sky is now a symbol of brutality here. Here is not safe. Yeah, we have lived in darkness that it takes blindness to cure us. Yeah, it's in Nigeria. Nigeria. It's Nigeria. I remember the color blue in more than the meaning of the sky. When our hearts filled with the air, we never felt the thought of not having it. Of butterfly wings and societal hurricanes and confluence. Dinner bowls steamed with stew, cooling grandpa's temper. And when mouths cooled our spoons, the laughter would spill onto the room with backyard dreams and recountings of pirates falling from the roof of the shed. Here is Nigeria. I remember the song sound rising from dad rising from you like om. When our souls brim, full bellies glowed and only our smiles gave us away, between toes tapping and head bobbing in a rapper's delight. The rocks hop the lake like a frog across a pot of boiling water. When your arms split the air and my forehead ran red after the lightning broke on peels of groans, here in Nigeria, I remember, I remember, I remember. Here, Nigeria, dances in my throat or my mind's eye every time grandpa stories run and Anansi would win. When all that is or can be is all that there was or ever shall be. His voice reminds me. His voice reminds me. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you both for that. Thank you, Elvis. Thank you, Amos. Uh, you know that his, you know his his uh, his eyes whispered amazing grace, and even that line between the two, and uh, you know, here's Nigeria. I remember the color blue more than the sky, like. Uh, 
again, lots and lots and lots for, you know, everyone to, to keep with us. Um, the next pair coming up are Akita and Isenia, Isenia, Isine, Isine Ego, Joseph Mar. Um, Akita is a thinker who believes love is life. Joseph Mark, an, an, an enigmatic entanglement and mix of two different tribes. Uh, let's welcome. Hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm um, I'm going to read um, his poem and my poem. And uh, and um, actually, these poems are dedicated to the people who are suffering today. Fumbling, stumbling through the thick of the abyss, oblivion and discontent gnaws at my folly. Swaggering, prancing, fighting all of the hurt like a menacing vendetta. Blinded, mystified by this fear boiling through this guts, burning within like wildfire. I seek, I yearn, I turn to nowhere to somewhere, to everywhere, for solace, for contentment. Allah, none, I realize. Choking, I gag, struggling to breathe through all this struggle, through all this strife. I stagger, I sway, breathless I lay, devoid of resolute life. Slowly, life slowly fizzles out. My efforts are weak, I lie. Lo, I dream, I gleam, hoping to escape the claws of this past, craving a new beginning, hoping to win through all of these struggles, and once more, free at last. I hope to scream with fresh breath, free at last, I hope to be. That's from Joseph. And uh, my answer to that was, um, um, free at last, she took the long way home out of the past. She be free. Free at last. Today she decided to tell somebody. Shh, listen. She emerged from her unapologetic season, panting, a sacrifice set free. Black body like new dirt in planting season. Locks dripping, mind transformed, spirit stretched out wide like shade on a sunny southern afternoon. She left herself a long, long time ago. Or maybe it was just for a moment. She is pregnant, a world of stories in her being. She is all light. Her stories push the brush on canvas and make her words twist and shout from a place under scabs and stitches that present like abstract art on display. Stories that were sown in blood, tears, and yes, sometimes ecstasy. Stories that made the half note dance and she spit words that gave new birth. She is more than a daughter, a mother, a wife. She is a savior, a messiah, a peacemaker, a miracle worker, a healer, the light of the world. Not a queen, but a goddess. Can you hear her sounds of freedom? The beat is funky, sweet, deep, and black. Can you see its color shine? She is a womb. Her blackness walks before her like a bulletproof shield. In her bosom, she carries the secrets of life. She decided to tell somebody. Shh, listen. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for, for reading. Uh, you know, you, you know your work as well as as well as Joseph's. You know, I love you know that my efforts are weak, alive, the 
take me back to the shade on a Sunday, on a, mm-hmm. or a sunny southern Sunday afternoon. And, mm-hmm. You know, her blackness walking before like a bulletproof shield. Just, yes. Um, definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. And so, coming up with our, uh, you know, our next peer, uh, pair, <laughs> Koku Konu and Ayodele Zima. Koku, poetry allows me to reflect and interrogate. Ayodele is a multidiscipline creative force. Let's, let's, let's work. So, Koku and I pass back and forth a, a couple of lines. One is likes its understanding deep. Another line is at five months old. And so this poem is called Likely Magic. At five months old, I was most likely already magic. Probably had been that way from the start or before. Born with a call over my face, eyes and all. Likely was magic right away. Trials and tribulation follow magic and they done followed me all my life. Always had to be magic just to hold the idea of me. Surviving odds and failing to be a statistic. Had to be magic to conjure survival, magic kept the candle lit in a storm of a life, a sink or swim kind of journey, requiring all three eyes looking for the signs, searching for the keys, waiting in the gray everydayness of things endured like poverty, young parents, no inheritance, and leaky bags of secrets that weigh a lot, but don't pay no bills, you got intentions on paying. Good thing I remembered sooner than later. Later is rarely better than sooner, but it do get its time, you know, brighter, lighter. Magic always been tricky. Mine, no different. Almost worked better before I knew about it. Before I learned the cost of things and how not to blow up a room with my random thoughts or tell the truth to fools because such things wear hard on them that brings it on themselves, hands over their eyes, unaware, bereft of magic, full of privilege, but unlucky, lucky, but not magic. Yes, I was probably always magic. No need to color in the lines. Magic likes its understanding deep and plants itself inside bright pennies, grandma's wish on, grandfather's dream. Seeds planted in an intentional universe where there are no lines between anything. Most answers are yes, and bright children learn to fly because there is sky and magic to be tended. I've always been magic. I never eat from empty plates. Bone before bowl, my cups overflow. Good character is my companion. Good fortune follows me. Abundance sits at my table. My dreams come true. They attract other dreamers, flying in and out of everything. Only sky above us. I was born magic. Unlikely, impractical an indulgent manifestation, prayed for and predicted, tested and true, bold, remembering to remember. And I was most likely always magic. I'm sorry, that, that's, that's amazing. I did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> I was tripping when I was listening to it. <laughs> because I'm sorry, I, I, I have to button Kevin. I did it, sent me a recording of that, which was um, a visual. So 
because I, I sent her a recording and she sent me a visual of hers and I was like, yeah, go, 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 quiet, Lily, quiet, Lily. So, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of order, but I think that's fantastic. <laughs> No, definitely. Like, Hello? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I wait, I wait, I wait. I, I identify spells, I identify spells magic, M-I-J-I-C-K in the poem. So I was tripping and she's, she's just done little things that you can't see as well. It's really good, really good, really good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Deb, Kevin, I support your um, yeah, hosting. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, so, so that was so that was where lines going, you know, back and forth, just between, you know, between you two. No, 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 no. She she blew me out of the water completely. I mean, no, there's no response. <laughs> there's no response. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, but but I, I, I mean, totally honest. I mean, no, the, the, I mean, she, she, no, she, she, I mean, yeah, I, I, I told, I, I wrote back, I wrote her back and said, you, you've taken it up a, a few notches too many. I mean, this is too, when you're doing high jump or long jump, you go up in inches, you know, but she just went up like, oh, I'll, I'll do a foot. And they added 12 <laughs> inches to the bar and she scaled it. And I'm saying, oh, okay. <laughs> right. But I'm going to talk now a bit because I, I've actually, absolutely, I mean, I haven't commented, but I've absolutely enjoyed the stuff that's been going out and I'm really intimidated. So, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's you got truth. this, poet, you got this. Yeah, you got it. Oh. No, I, haven't, I, haven't got it. I, I have not, I have not got it. I have not got it. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you got it, okay. you got it. No, Ke Kevin, I'll be, I'll be very honest with everybody. I have struggled with this narrative poetry. I really have. I have tried, I have written, I have written, I have written. And I just find that the way I see things, I, I just can't, I can't go back in memory and start being, and start, I, I just feel it's nostalgic. And, I, and so I ended up doing something, but I'm going to send it to Ayodele privately. I'm not going to read it out here. <laughs> oh, don't do that to so, us! Don't do that to us. Uh, what I'm gonna do? No, 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 no I'm, I'm gonna read something. I'm gonna read something. Can I? Can I? I want to read my very first poem I wrote oh, to yeah. Ayodele. Yeah, before I knew what she was about. <laughs> so I, I'll do that one. My very first poem in the exchange, if you don't mind. Please. Okay. All right, can anyone hear me? Because I'm excited, so I, I tend to sound like um, someone who's not okay. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, first poem I wrote was Love Without Jealousy. And there were lots of things that came up um, that made me think about that. And it was loosely based on, I think, um, Carla gave us a theme. I think I ignored the theme and just wrote what I wanted. So, so this is it. I said, what is love? It's the apparition, closely quartered as life. Tepid most times, lukewarm at most. A constant elemental state of no change, no molten emotion, no liquid delights, no gassy exhilaration. Certainly no alchemy, just a chemistry. Elemental and confined to its periodic table position. What is love without jealousy? A red chime of mild confrontation, truckloads of indulgent consideration, sprigs of peacemaking olive branches, liberally doused with the olive oil of compromise, tossed in a salad of understanding. Two sides of the same coin, alone in a pocket, no jangles, no friction. Is this what love without jealousy is? Hang on, wait a minute. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's a melodic relationship of utter bliss, where a kiss is just that, a kiss, devoid of any follow through, where compassion overrides passion. Understanding is deep and fulfillment is true. That's it, bye. <laughs> 
No, no. I don't know why you were so. That was that was that was great. <laughs> what is love without jealousy? I, an empty apparition? No liquid delights? Just chemistry? Yeah. No, I'm. I am. I am. I am with you. Uh, magic on both ends. I love you know that. Oh yeah, I like. I'm. I'm. I'm a. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of both of you. Uh. Uh. You know now. Um. I'm gonna remember, you know, having that magic. And I like that. You see, thanks for telling us it's 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 magic with the with the J. Um, <laughs> I love that. Um, our next pair uh, coming up. Oh, actually, uh, it <laughs> yeah, it's uh uh actually if Ife is not here, I believe. So I had the pleasure, uh, very deep pleasure, and of you know, of of uh uh ex you know exchanging poems you know you know now and I, you know I want to continue um with Ifeanyi Chuku who is a prodigal poet now back to base um and you know me Kevin a writer of poetry postscript and code um Ife could not could not be here with us today because he you know you know ex you know uh ex you know also you know experienced a lost in the family and so is is you know in bereavement and you know was you know we you know was writing you know even you know was writing through uh you know some of that process and you know we exchanged some messages uh you know about so uh i just i want to read a poem that i want to read a poem that you know that he, you know that he wrote and then uh the sort of following poem that, uh, uh followed up with. So this is Reassurance by Ife. He brought me from a mighty long way. Now I journey back west to east from a surgery aborted midway into puberty that her lungs may heal and lift her reality. Will I unbundle my thoughts as we speed along, as the antelope leaps high away from its pursuer? Or should I Reminisce my worries in this pilgrimage of assurance before we go, uh, before we go in for the night. In the shadow of frenzied thoughts, I ask, will it go well? In the midst of these doubts and faith, lace like, tw lace like twins in present scenario, I peek, will she live? Half a decade has been served, flurry of escapades deserving voluminous tales. We all got drunk in passion of help, the sighs that filled a bank. And now, lightening the lamp to see the long pathway to surgery room. Not of pain, but of life I see. Not of tears, but of hope it be that her limbs will fly again, that this heart can breathe aloud, and all once dead come to life. Such that sun lies side by side with earth, and handshake of solidarity that heaves us nurses and tributary of success and crescendo of applause and when wheeled out of rebirth to begin anew glowing shall it be the colors of her new life um, and and then uh the poem in response Translating the birds. The colors of her new life. Thursday's tire tracks not yet dusted away from the desert sand as Friday's sun rises. How short the morning is stretched in a hammock, hungry for more hours. I come out of silence, pushed only by the blue calls of California scrub jay and pioneer town. America's promise, like ice tossed between two Joshua trees. Their root systems lie in wait. The white crowned sparrow glides between these trees twice and settles between them on the ground as I write. Clouds still moss skyline in San Francisco, but the blue is the same and infinite as I write. The air warms with ancestors. A plump chuckwalla basks in their light on a rock as I write. My ancestors and yours on the skin, I thank them as I write. 
I remember a laugh with a woman from Ghana before she pricks me as I write. My arm an olive branch to a virus as I write. Balmy surrender like the chuckwalla. As I write, I know a cousin is covering me now as sure as I am my mother is in the moonlight. As I write, a man I have never met toasts my sideburns and I turn my cheek. As I write, a woman, your distant kin, who loves you deeply, glimmers in the heat haze. As I write, someone brings first sweat to my scalp and cools me down. As I write, a black-throated sparrow's talons wrap around the leaves of a yucca plant to perch. As I write, hold me and help me live, our will as clear as the air I breathe. As I write. Keep me close to the word, to the power of the word. As I write, the curved wings of Vox Swift's flock all upturn. As I write, forever and ever. Amen. Beautiful. I just want to chime in here and say thank you, Kevin, for both introducing and emceeing at the same time. Oh, such a beautiful poem. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. A lot of love in the chat there. Really, such a beautiful piece. Um, our next pair are Iris Crawford and Matthew Latour. Iris is a journalist and poet based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Matthew, Lagos born poet, hypercritical thinker, articulate storm. Let's give it up for him and welcome our next readers. Okay, the poem we're doing is titled Outlaw. Outlaw. Um, I, I, I believe it's something every poet can relate to. It's, talks about dreaming and swimming against the tide. So I'm just gonna head right into it. Go on, call me an outlaw all you want because I refuse to stand by your standards and sit by your citadel, seeking an approval that disapproves of everything I represent. I will not be present in your desires and absent where my dreams requires, I am an outlaw. Because failure has become excusable and mediocrity is the medium with which we now communicate. Why is impossible the only opinion that now matters? We celebrate boundaries that bound us. We set limits and call them milestones. You say the sky is your limit. So tell me, what was Armstrong doing on the moon? My dreams are contrary to popular opinions, and that doesn't make them invalid. It does not exist even if I do not see it. So I call on outlaws just like me. We would travel faster if we follow our dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, and I will continue. If we follow our dreams, I wouldn't be president or Rihanna. Would I trade places with Rupi Kaur? Probably not. But like her, I'd like to create new worlds with my words. If we follow our dreams, I'd be lying pathways to true liberation, true liberation, self-care, joy, and love. Dreams that would let me go back in time and tell my younger self to keep forging on that I'm on time, it will be my time. This is my time. I have time. I am enough. I have enough, enough. If we follow our dreams, earth would no longer be my home. This body would no longer be a capsule to my limits. My spirit would transcend borders, atmospheres, and create black futures. Features, features so black, so surreal that we would never comprehend the concept of oppression. If we follow our dreams, would I truly be free? Thank you, everybody. 
Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, let's uh, transcend there. Uh, you know, this is this is your time. You are enough. If we followed our dreams, Earth would no longer be my home. Oh, I love that. And you know, and you know, Matthew as well with those with those dreams. You know, dreams. Are, you know, was a, my dreams are contrary to popular opinion, but that doesn't mean they're uh, you know they're invalid. You know, being an outlaw, having that having that spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Great word. Well, our our next pair are uh, Elaine Brown and Chiche Obasi. Elaine, my ancestors whisper of wisdom in my poetry. Uchechi, shape shifting through time and space with art. Let's welcome Elaine and Uchechi. Okay, so uh, the poem I'm reading is called What a Blessing and it comes from the inspirational women poems. I, I chose this because um, I'm the youngest woman in my generation on both sides of my family tree. So I did a lot of studying of the women in my family. <laughs> so <laughs> this is called What a Blessing. History is a very important tool, especially when you know how to use it. But history is not just about where you come from. History is not just about where you've been. History is not just about your place and birth, but history has everything to do with your self-worth. So don't ever expect to find it in any history book because, you know, a lot of the things that I talk about reflect in my childhood, bad and good, because there's a lot of things that I do in my life that I know it's not right. But just like you, every day for me is a continuous fight, but what a blessing it is to know who I am you see, because some people go their whole lifetime and never understand thoughts of anger, frustration, and confusion, because on the outside, we wear it well. But the problem is on the inside, where we <laughs> truly dwell. Time after time, a friend of mine said that her mother was an idol. Well, I don't believe in idols, but if I did, my mother would be mine too. I do believe that the Lord has put inspirational people in my life to kind of guide me and to see me through. And I came to tell you about a few. <laughs> she was head of the household and she lived to be 90 years old, but grandma left behind a legacy. She passed it on to my mother so that all that I am, all that I will become and all that I will be, my mother passed that on to me. And that's why I can stand before you because I, I practice what I preach. Now listen, y'all, because I came to teach. See, yes, I'm angry over some of the things that have happened to me. And yes, I'm frustrated because time after time I turn those pages in my book and take a look. And yet some things are still outdated. Yes, I'm confused because sometimes I do the right things and I still lose, but I learn. It's all according to what you choose. So to those successful doctors, oh yes, you made it. To those successful lawyers, oh yes, you made it. To those single mothers, oh yes, you made it. You reached the age 21, oh yes, you made it. Anyone with a job when people have none, yes, you made it. But turn those pages in your book and take a look, y'all, because you're going to find some things. Listen, because the only thing that I'm saying to you is don't leave it to someone else to define yourself. Find yourself. And oh, what a blessing it is to know. See, I don't do this just for a show. See, my very existence comes straight from experience of what a blessing it is to know in all of my mistakes <laughs> that the Lord still uses me to create. And what a blessing it is to know who I am. What's up, women of the world? Do you know who you are? What a blessing. Thank you. What a blessing to have had you come before me, half Amazon, half child, battlefields and playground, calling blood grape wine, decorating my eyes with lies, filling my mouth with sour patch. And what a time to have been you, 
sprinkling carefree laughter like a bride's confetti, reading the paper to father, reviving your esteem with heavy breaths of courage stolen from pages of old books. Oh, what a blessing to have been mothered by you, flat-chested, ostrich-necked lass, cradling secrets with oblivion, gliding through tomorrow, waiting with worry for when recollection becomes a photograph and reality distances from the truth. What a blessing to be twisted with gratitude, like the braid on my soft scalp, to live as you, for you, through you, to honor your sacrifice, bloom wildly like rare orchids, to evolve, full Amazon, full woman. Thank you. Yes, yes, beautiful, beautiful. Half Amazon, half woman. Uh, yeah, no, y'all, good, you know, you made it. <laughs> you know, both those from the, from the beginning, the history being an important tool, and you know how to use it to, you know, what a blessing to have you come before me. And, you know, just that reminder to, to find yourself. So thank you. Uh, next up, we have the next pair, uh, Wanda Safir, and then, uh, you know, again, love out to, to, to Jim and I. Um, so Sister Wanda Spear is an advocate for, uh, for Black women and the, a woman in the diaspora, and Jim and I. I'm a nonconformist, yet a free thinker. So um, Gemini and I are both, Gem we're both June Geminis. So, so really he is here because I'm here. So I'm going to start with his poem, Home Going, and followed by my poem. Home Calling, Gemini. For all is illusion, what then do we hold on to? For all is fleeting. What then do we clench our fists upon? My ancestors, dauntless clan of warlords, my ancestors, fearsome clan of shamans, my ancestors, vast compendulums of verses, my ancestors, now a large body of water, taking the semblance of Oya and Mother Earth, my ancestors, now a fiery furnace of raging coals, in guise of Shango and cohorts, my ancestors, overflowing purity and calm spelt as Oshun and all her radiant glory, my ancestors. Now a heap of sand to lay firm the breast bones of their offspring's huts. No one learns the art of swimming in dry lands. This city is desert, locked, landlocked in drought. But I am my mother incarnate, blue waters and yet another skin. I do not drown or sink. Like fire raging through my father's chest, I will rather float. Smithereens do not burn. My body is a collection of ancient scrolls. My voice a babble of songbirds whose potions are laced in honey jars. My soul a playback of moments before. My verses are loop tapes. My ancestors uttered these words first. They thought they buried my ancestors how mild can ignorance be? My ancestors were never buried. They only transited to another city with Mother Earth's chest as pathway. For all is illusion. What then do we hold on to? For all is fleeting. What then do we clench our fists upon? For this world is merely a stranger's land. Who then shall escort me back home? Who then? Who then? when I whisper solemnly, who then shall lead me to my ancestors? For home, home is the soothing pat of my forebears. Home is the proverbial smile of my ancestors. Home is my ancestors gleefully embracing me in a feast of eternal welcome. Ashe, that's Gemini. And my poem, um, Libations for the Agungun, 
or prayer for the butterflies is an adaptation. And you have to you have to listen for the line because it's buried <laughs> about the illusion. <clears throat> Colorful angels fill sky, wings dip in morning dew, sweetness scents horizons. This poem is for those who left too soon and the wandering souls trapped, unable to return or find home. Kidnapped and sold to soul catchers, we are forgotten much along the way, but our tongues remain attached to our hearts and speak truth. Listen, spirit guides talk to us, butterflies or ancestors help us recall what is wonderful and we smile, blessed. We need a ceremony, a container where we can hold what was lost, now found. Golden stories, silver melodies, grass beats and silences. Perhaps these words are libations for those souls who have lost direction. I dip my tongue in ink, spraying accolades and diamonds on the lost ones. My palms are maps, coordinates in a tapestry or landscape not plugged into the local GPS signals. My tongue dipped in red ink writes blackness on white slates. My words are prayers, each syllable an incantation, each punctuation mark a signpost in the dark for those walking in candlelight. My words are prayers, prayers for those who left here too soon, for those who sit on concrete slabs, lie on metal benches, sit in isolated corridors at closed doors waiting waiting for a human, waiting for acknowledgement, waiting for acknowledgement of their humanity. These are my people. These are the people I write for. These are the words screaming, screaming behind locked doors, heavy clamoring, toes caught between barbed wire, storm fences, between rainstorms and rainbows. My tongue dipped in blues, sings memories, sings memories of or for the lost ones. My blues hymns coated with secret messages only the initiated understand. My blues break apart purples and greens, refracted landscapes where light breaks the prism and frees the spirit locked within. My tongue dipped in red sings Oya's fury, sweeping away the debris, the clutter, the confusion that sometimes keeps the wandering ones trapped. I sing a song, I sing a song, copyright pending. This song lightens the load, makes the listener shake, check off burdens assigned but not earned. Today I sit at a stoplight on Castro on 18th Street in Oakland, California. An officer directs traffic, signals out. When he turns, a driver runs the imagined light. Imagine collision avoided. We who watch shudder, then sigh. The moment passes, the driver a bad memory, or was he just lucky? Slaves are not lucky. This song is for guidance. This song uses a landline. This song renders toxicity benign, curative. This song clarifies the water. It makes butter from the milk. It enriches all who hear it, all who feel it all who participate in it. This song is a tapestry, a human tapestry with threads connecting 100 million lives rent asunder. This song is a lullaby for those with insomnia. It's, it's a passageway through the doors of no return, though the door is still closed and we have to pay the troll to the troll at the gate. Aquaba or welcome hits our backside. Surprisingly, the passage didn't kill us, but made us a stronger black people. The toll, the labor, the stench, the horrors we forget intentionally to survive the moment, this moment, an immediacy that is our recent history held against a greater history, if we remembered, would sustain us. But we are not deterred. The journey has made us wiser. It didn't weaken us, but made us develop antibodies. Antibodies, antibodies for an army that cannot be defeated. We are, as Nikki Giovanni says, 
of bad people. I dip my tongue into elixir. I dip my tongue into an elixir of secret potion passed forward through unclassified DNA. It is the melanin colored memories, a secret potion only the innocent dare drink. This testimony is for those who are in pain. This testimony is for the yet to be born. This poem is an ashe, a hallelujah, an amen, a so be it to those standing at the crossroads making informed choices. If all is an illusion, the rightly guided, those who stride on Asaral to Mustakim, Allah's people, hold on to the reality and give thanks. Ashe. Thank you very much. Like, uh, you know, again, for Gemini's words, for yours, you know, uh, just that, again, we do need a, uh, was a ceremony for uh, what we can hold what was lost, now found. And, you know, no one learns the art of swimming on dry land. Uh, just fantastic work. And of course, always uh, bringing this, you know, Nikki Giovanni into the space is always welcome. Uh, so let's continue, you know, continue on with our, our, our next pair. Uh, Iman Gibson, Juliet Naji, Juliet connects to the world by wielding her pen, Iman, wellness educator and evangelist from Los Angeles. So I'll be reading my piece. It's the first piece I shared with Iman. Um, it's, um, it's untitled, so enjoy. I am from a place where women are told to end their dreams in the kitchen like broken plates that can never be fixed. Mama would sit me outside her makeshift store, dangling pain on her neck like a label, wearing a blouse and wrapper with sacrifice boring holes in them. She would then tell me stories of our youth, how she sold the chicken suits to send herself to school because her father wouldn't, then sacrifice that straight A's results to get married to Papa. I come from a place where women shrink beautiful thoughts and daring dreams because they have been made to believe that their body is an accident. In our little home of eight, Problems crept in and out. Mama would walk all day, shut her away at night, yet there will be no one to offer her emotional support because sharing feelings isn't cost effective. All Papa can boast of was a contoured face with a disgruntled frown as he raised his iron fist on Mama, each punch leaving a dismantled puzzle of teeth and flesh and a rough sketch of colors on her eyes. I am from a place where polite smiles is plated on faces of girls whose temple has become a, a place for broken men. Somewhere, a woman is afraid for her life. Like an unarmed soldier in a wide open field, in the war she never asked for. She is negotiating her body when no is not enough. She is watching a shadow turns friends into predators and resistance merely a suggestion. Yet she must keep on the figure of, I am fine, not a denier but self-therapy for self-immolation to avoid being blamed and scorned and abused some more. Every night, I woke up to the creaking of our wooden door to see Papa tiptoeing into my sister's room. Now she has a replica of him sprouting inside her. No one must know because we wouldn't want to disgrace the family. I am from the, a place where the universe dishes are rice in the basket, yet we cannot ask for soup because she is not obliged to be fair about anything, not our needs or our wants or our actions. In this place where I come from, we have learned to become our watchmen and to fight, refusing to settle into the norm of generations, refusing to shield our eyes from those hovering like flies around our baskets with their patriarchal and misogynistic beliefs. On the day she start get back to her sister and we are made to filter our laughter to weigh its worth. Papa died in his sleep. After sister and I caught, her, caught him staring at the newborn like her, like her body was not our own. We were covering all our blind spots and taking back the night, for we no longer wear fear like a second skin. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you so much um, for sharing that, Julia. It's so powerful. Um, wow, I just need a moment. Um, hi everyone. So um, I follow on to Juliet's first poem with an experience, um, sorry, just reacting to her poem, so beautiful and powerful. Um, whew, uh, 
just writing about kind of my own uh, experience with my mother and her uh, her exploration of her identity and complicated relationship being from the South United, Southern United States and um, kind of what she instilled in me and what that meant around being black and how to survive um, in this world. So um, for we no longer, and, and it's rather concise. So just sharing that at the, to begin. For we no longer wear fear like a second skin, like peeled grapes, lightly chilled, arranged in decorative glass, indicative of our class and whether we don white for cotillions waiting. Pristine and perfect, all pressed hair and blue grease edges, starch dresses and the comforting scent of baby powder contained. Good black people, you know, the obedient kind, trust, the trustworthy and benign, empty eyed and order following, quick to stomach discomfort as to avoid inducing it, like perfectly peeled grapes, fresh out of the icebox on a hot summer's day, just waiting to become amorphous. Thank you. Ooh, wow, no, thank you. That was, uh, that was beautiful and beautiful Juliet. Like that, what is it like that perfectly peeled grapes wait on a summer day waiting to become amorphous? Uh, and, you know, being, you know, coming from a place where women are made to believe that, you know, the body is an accident. Uh, and then with, uh, what was it? We no longer wear fear, like a second skin. Ah, uh, just, you know, beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you, everyone. You know, thank you, everyone. This has just been, been great. Um, I believe, uh, uh, you know, Amani and Victory are not, but thank you. Thank you, everyone. Like, again, to all the, all the readers here and who, you know, were, you know, unable to be here to, you know, Carla, fantastic for, you know, one, you know, bringing this all together and all, you know, holding the space to Koku, to Shuffle Collective, just, Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to pass it back to you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for all of your holding it down for us, for the beautiful way you um, led us through this, this day, this day of beauty and challenges and some mourning. Um, it was a beautiful exchange. I just want to offer it. I want to also thank um, Koku and CIA Lagos, all the poets, um, Meg, who's been helping me with administrative tasks. Um, thanks to everyone. Um, Tess at Shuffle Collective has hosted this platform. And I think Tess has an announcement. Uh, if, you're, if you're here, Tess. Hi, everyone. Um... I just, first of all, just wanted to, to do one more quick follow-up on the incident that happened. We are going to get that um, investigated to the best of our ability through the video. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Carla, for involving us in hosting this amazing event. Um, Shuffle Collective is a platform. We're a platform and a collective of writers, artists, and um musicians from all over the world. Um, we provide a platform for you to showcase your projects and your work, build out your CV and create um, a professional web presence for yourself, as well as connect with this amazing global community that we're building. Um, so if you're part of the um, West Oakland to West Africa exchange, you get direct access to become a member. So watch out for that email from Carla. Um, and if you are not, and you'd like to be part of the community, please, uh, encourage, please, we do encourage you to apply and, um, we'd love to have you. So thank you everyone. Thanks, Carla. Thanks everyone. And thanks for allowing us this extra time. It was a beautiful reading. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Let's let you then clap. It's amazing. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, everyone. Keep writing. Bye, Keep creating. That was lovely. Bye, everyone. Bye.